Hi! In this video, I'll be explaining clusters and how to make them for the building of a game's resolution tree. Here at SpeedTree, we use the word cluster for textures that create the upper canopy of a tree. They are usually the branch and twig structures with leaves. So here, I have a blank scene open, and I'll start with building a basic tree setup. A trunk generator and a branch generator with only one branch. In order to arrange the cluster pieces accurately, you want to set the camera to the angle you want to export the cluster from. In this case, the XY plane, where the camera is above the model looking down on the cluster. Then I go to my Window Properties, Screenshot Safe Frame, and Enable Show. This draws a red line box in your viewport letting you know what areas will be included in the material export. Once this is all set up, you can then continue to build your branch and leaf structure. For demoing purposes, I have already set up and assigned my leaf and bark materials, and will do a quick time lapse of the building of my cluster. During the sped up part showing the modeling of the branch and the leaf structure, I'll mention some helpful tips to consider as you work. It is important to try not to have overly repetitive patterns in your cluster, because when you add it to your model, it will become more apparent. I try to avoid this by having different spine links, noise, and by adding small details such as broken branches and buds to my cluster. Building more than one cluster that is then applied to your final model can also help with this. Also, using noise and displacement in your branches and twigs can help achieve a more natural look. Now you will notice that I used a leaf mesh generator for this, and that is because I may want to do some final tweaking with node edits. I didn't use the batch leaves generator, which doesn't allow for node editing, because it is intended to be fast and commonly used for high poly models. For my upper twigs and leaf placement, you'll notice that I tend to use the generation phyllotaxy mode. I like to use this mode because of the more naturalistic placement the various arrangement styles offer, such as alternating and opposite. Adding variants and using the curves are two other key aspects when building your model. You'll notice that a majority of my edits are done to the curves. You can find more information on curves in our documentation or in the Curve tutorial. Something else to consider, as you add and edit your branches, be cautious of the empty space in your texture, because it can lead you to having to add more triangles in your cluster mesh or result in overdraws. Just going to fill up some of my inner branch space with small twigs. Lastly, don't be afraid to apply finishing touches by using node editing. This can really make a difference on your final model. Okay, all that's looking good. So now that I have something that I like, I'm going to show you some tools and tips that will help you get a better leaf cluster. First thing is collision. Too many overlapping leaves can cause a cluster to look more like a solid color from the distance. Also, if you have a lot of leaves in your cluster and don't want to waste time manually editing them, then collision will automatically remove overlapping geometry. Once collision is turned on, you can go to the collision setting over the viewport and enable cluster plane overlapping prevention, which removes any overlapping leaves based on your camera's position. My second tip is that for leaves and fronds, make sure to change the local orientation unification property to global. This will make them mostly face out, which helps obtain a broader specular highlight across the leaves. Another thing you want to check is if you have any flipped leaves, which is something to avoid in a cluster map since it can cause some dark spots to appear in your cluster. A good way to check this is to go to Show and disable the two-sided rendering option. 
Nothing happened because all my leaves are facing in the same direction. But you'll notice that as I rotate them, the ones showing the back faces will disappear. If you happen to have one or two, you can rotate them by using node edits. The next thing to look at is leaf lighting. Having correct normals is very important in order to have a cluster map that lights correctly. If you select the leaf generator, you'll find a lighting group with a couple of properties that'll help you adjust your leaf normals. I tend to set my parent puffiness to global and enter a small value, which faces the leaf normals out based on the position of the ancestor that is touching the ground. Then I add a variance of 0.10 to the adjustments up, right, and out properties, which applies a little difference on the direction of the normals so they don't appear like a flat sheet on the tree as the light moves across it. Okay, all that's looking good. The last thing to look at are the materials. As you can see in my leaf materials, I have gloss set high because I can always tone this down after I export the cluster. And I typically place a color variance on each of the leaf materials. This way they are not one solid block of color. With our speed tree clusters, we like to set up and tune seasons, which we can then export and apply to the game models. It is also important to make sure that you set your bark's subsurface color to black and the subsurface amount to zero. You wouldn't want any light to pass through the branch and twigs portion of your map. Once this is all done and has been checked, you can go to File and then Export Material. By default, it is automatically set up to export everything for a 2K PBR material setup. However, this can all be altered to your desired specification. Okay, that's done exporting. So here are the leaf cluster textures after the export is done. It is the same textures that you will import into a new speech tree file and make a mesh cutout for with the mesh cutout tool. If you need more information on this, check out our mesh cutout tool tutorial. Well, that is it for this video and thank you for watching.